Welcome back to the 716 Sports Podcast, recording here, as we always do, on this fine Monday evening, the week of August 12th. And, guys, I have a confession to make. I I love preseason football. I try to pretend that I don't love it, that I can't wait for it to be over, but deep down inside, I love everything about it, mostly because this time of year, football fans are so starved for anything to happen on a field that we have to take all this time. Every NFL fan is dissecting every second that has happened in these games to draw their conclusions. Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, set for all-star caliber seasons. TJ Yeldon's NFL career, done. Chad Kelly, future Hall of Famer. Of course, all this determined by one half of one game in which most of the top starters didn't play, but, man, football is back, baby. You remember last year's game. Uh, against the Panthers, in which Josh Allen threw the world's greatest incompletion at the beginning of the third quarter. And that was all we could talk about. And then Nathan Peterman game, too. Nathan so Peterman. Let, lest we forget. QB1. Tweet it up. Guy's doing it again for the Raiders. Shout out to the University of Miami, Florida, for making a QB1 tweet today. That's going to age well. I was well. super excited. <laughs> super excited to see that. Well, it's good to be back. It's good to have football uh, in some form we're a couple weeks away from where anything really matters and you really only have to pay attention that third game but certainly a couple takeaways that we can uh that we can draw from uh in the in the in the game here against the colts and the colts weren't really putting much of a fight either just a drive or two for both teams that was really about it matt barkley's leading the way uh for the bills so there's really not much to say in terms of that josh allen looked he had a couple Nice throws. He also had a couple batting completions. The consistency is what he's going to be judged on. It's hard to say after just a couple drives. There's yeah. really not much to say on that. There's not enough of a sample size. There's not enough of the toughest part about grading quarterbacks, especially at this point of the preseason, is that not only are they not playing the top guys, the guys who are coming in, this is not the defensive scheme that the Indianapolis Colts are going to put out for their week one opponent. There's no creative blitzing. There's no. It's very vanilla. Coverages. Yeah, it's. it's Black and white as can be, and the main reason is you want to figure out which of your guys is guy 53 and which one is guy 83. So you just run them through the basic stuff, see who can stick, and then you know kind of work it out from there. But, I mean, Indy has no Andrew Luck, no Marlon Mack, no T.Y. Hilton on the offense, and a lot of their guys on the defensive side, guys like Leonard barely. I don't even know if Leonard was on the field at all during that game. The Bills, I think maybe for kids' day, let Allen go a little bit more than you might maybe expect the first team offense to go. And he still only went, what, game. two drives? He was two drives, six of 11. 11 yeah. straight pass plays. Yeah, they were definitely letting him throw it. Um, right. Which, hey, you might as well see what you got. It, and maybe there's a play or two that you can run a couple times later in the season. But a lot of it's vanilla. There's not much going on. Um, but there's there's other things. And it kind of, what you're looking at are maybe some more of these depth guys uh, that you're interested in, seeing what they could potentially do. And. I think a lot of that for the Bills comes in the in the rushing and in the passing game, um, which are basically the two parts of offense. So let me rephrase <laughs> that and say the running backs and the wide receivers. Um, you I know, mean, that, obviously the the big headline is we have a really good rugby player who's very fast. That running back room is really crowded right now. It is. Uh, you know, no LaShawn McCoy, and you take out Matt Barkley's run, and, and Josh Allen each had one credited with one attempt, but you still got – seven or eight guys that had a run. Um, to me right now, it's, it's pretty clear who the guys that are going to make this team are. Um, I, it Obviously, LaShawn McCoy, I think, you know, it, not running in this game. Maybe, maybe not. He doesn't make it. We know Frank Gore will be on the team, I think, no doubt. Devin Singletary, obviously, as well. Anybody else really interesting in terms of the, the running back stable? There's a lot of names there. Wade is really interesting, and I don't think it's fast. He's, he's a guy right? that you can count on for anything significant in your offense this year in terms of, like, this is a guy who hasn't played professional football for even a year at this point of his life. No, he's a baby when don't, it comes Don't to they it. have some kind of protection yeah, the, on the him? Path, like, because he's part of the International Pathway Program. Right, I think so you have some roster they, leniency They can put him on the practice squad, and he cannot be signed off of it. Is that correct? That is my understanding. But, if they, but if, if they put him on the practice squad, they can't activate him from it. Sorry, Justin. So either makes the 53 or goes to the practice squad. Or, or it's squad next for year for him. Yeah. Sorry, Justin. I didn't mean to cut You're you fine. off there. I heard that it couldn't even actually play till next year. Oh, Actually. that's false. If he makes the team, he makes the team. But if, if he gets put on the practice squad, they cannot bring him up to the big club for any reason. But at, just in that one run, isn't there enough there to say this is a guy that I'm, I'd be willing to 
I take mean, a, have a, them return a practice kicks squad or something. You know? yeah, well, yeah, well, see what you got. Maybe you have found very, money here. Very fast. Uh, clearly, I mean, at this point, I think you watch and we, Steve was mentioning before we came on. People were calling the Yeldon game turnover plagued or fumble plagued. I mean, he only had the one, but you're a guy who was probably the fourth or fifth at best running back, and you come in and fumble like that. That doesn't bode well for a guy who was maybe very well on the ounce already, anyway. If he's not in, I mean, Sonoris Perry is Sonoris Perry. He's a special teams he's guy. Been around. He's been around. Man, I. Yeah, they were going to probably I'm, carry one more running back, and it, it's got to be somebody who plays special teams as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, if, if it's I'm be a stud special team in player. the coaching room, I would give I would give Wade a couple a couple looks this week and yeah. see what he does. If he if he turns out that that was his best carry of the preseason by leaps and bounds, he put him on the practice squad. But if he can. That speed you can't teach. Yeah, you can right. teach him how to like become a receiver, how to block, and other things he would have to do to be an NFL running back. But if you can just get the ball in his hands and say, hit that corner, and we have an offensive line who this year maybe will actually be able to seal the edge for him, yeah. I'm I'm intrigued. Well, what's stopping them from giving him the bulk of carries in the fourth preseason game? Nothing. You nothing. Know what I mean? and Make him the guy and give him the ball right. 20 times and see what happens. You want Yeldon or Wade? I mean, I'll take Wade at but this But you know point. what you have in Yeldon as well. You do. And Wade's there's, still a mystery, so but, give him the ball 20 times and yeah. see what he does. And Yeldon is third or fourth in terms of even interest, and in, in, in he's just such a vanilla guy, whereas yeah. Wade may have some game-breaking potential. I'm not saying that he's going to rush for 1,500 yards this season. He's a guy that needs space. But if he gets that space, the breakaway speed is pretty incredible. Well, yeah, it's, it's a guy who's used to playing to intentionally avoid any and all contact because the difference is between rugby and football. Basically, he's not wearing pads. He's not out there trying to make take a hit to make a play. I'm, if he learns the game and realizes that he's got that kind of speed, a guy who's got more protection to kind of go and take a hit Give down a field, it's interesting. Yeldon, Yeldon has to be intriguing still because didn't he lead the Jags in receptions last year? He had like 65 Well, yeah, the Jaguars' entire receiving core was on IR after like week four. Yeah, but, but I mean, that's still something. Like, is he especially, especially in a pass-heavy league. I'm not saying he's going to play every down, but I mean, the guy made his bread and butter but, catching balls last year. But that's an indication of a either a lot of pressure or a lot of Good coverage or a, and a lot of checkdowns. Yeah, there's a lot of checkdowns. Yeah, I don't know. McCoy or Yeldon, I think, doesn't make this team, and I have a sneaking suspicion McCoy will still be there. I think they may still see some trade value and try and get rid of McCoy at the trade deadline. Yeah. It so seemed to me like they ran Yeldon some more of the guy to me. Some passing for Singletary too. I think they were trying to see what he could do as a receiver. I don't think that was yeah, entirely can, unrelated to that. We can do nice screens with him. We can yeah. talk about that a little bit too. Moving on to kind of the, the receiving game, and yeah, he. Caught all three targets, 21 yards, nothing special out of the backfield, long of 10. But, hey, it, that's another dynamic. You, in today's NFL game, if your running backs can't catch the ball, you're, they're kind of useless. There's only a few guys, I mean, really outside of like a Chris Carson in Seattle, a couple others, that you need to be able to catch the ball and you need to be able to make a move in space. I think Singletary has that, and I think he did a nice job in limited play. You know, first, first professional game. Thought he looked pretty comfortable out there. Nine of twenty-seven on the ground, three of three uh, on the catches, on the targets, and twenty-one yards. I'd say a very good first game, something you can build on. Like I said, I do think this guy is the number one, uh, number one running back coming uh, out of this season for sure. If not, sometime in the midway. I I think so. I mean, Gore's really just a guy who's the locker room leader. He's gonna he's gonna take some carries. He's still capable of performing at an NFL level. But he's too old at this he's point old. to be down to be the the workhorse. Yeah, maybe he, get, you maybe yeah, you can't give him two hundred and fifty carries. If you need to. No, no, those days are gone. I feel like the Yeldon and Gore signings are very it's similar to the Sabres resigning Larson and Gergensons. It's like why are they signing both these guys? Yeah, it, even one of them. One maybe <laughs> both. And I I still think the Gore signing is kind of. I understand why they did it. Um, it fits the mantra of the team. It's not one that I would do, but I understand what they're in the scheme of what they're trying to do. He's a lunch pal, blue collar type of guy. Absolutely loves all the one Buffalo marketing campaigns. (laughs) Uh, really into that stuff. So, uh, that does it for that. Um, Zay Jones, two of 31, five targets. I don't know. And well, an injury. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, one of those the concussion was a, thing is a big deal. Did he get a concussion? Yeah, that yeah. one. He was in protocol. Uh, he cleared it though. He cleared in like the second quarter, and they just had the starters out by then. So he he didn't really get a ton of time. But it feels like he's the type of guy that gets a couple of nicks and cuts here. That was a 
Allen put him in a pretty bad spot there. He saw the hit coming, and he I think I think him ducking actually got him more injured. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he took his head off. Got to kind of stand in there yeah. and just take your licks. You might have been better off. But yeah, it's one of those leading the receiver. I mean, he kind of had to lead him there anyway, but kind of led the receiver directly into the safety. And Ba-boom. yeah, that one had the one that Allen short hopped him a good bit on that third down pass. It was probably Allen's worst throw of the night. I don't know. It, it, it's getting to the point, though, and obviously not in preseason as much as the regular season. Zay Jones has to start performing to some level because mm-hmm. how many you can only get so many free passive seasons. I mean, he's going to well, get last year with now. the injury and. Yep. It's at some point, especially with the additions of Beasley and Brown. I mean, we no longer are in a position where we re- have to rely on Zay Jones to be a number one or number two guy, depending on how Robert Foster is. Right. Didn't he drop like one pass his entire college yeah, career? He, his yeah, his catch rate was ridiculous. Yeah, at ECU. and what the, set the all time record yeah, for, uh, for catches in a season at East yeah. Carolina? Instead of quarterbacks, he's been there. Tyrod Taylor, Nathan Peterman. Yeah, but some of these are straight out drops. It, like, I'm not convinced that these guys are worse than his quarterback was at East Car- Eastern Carolina or whatever school that was. Oh, come on. Like East Carolina. Go Pirates. It's AAC. That's like top of the majors, in mid majors. None of what you just we'll said learn makes you. any sense to me. So We'll learn you. None of it. That weren't they, weren't they they like CJ 2K was, uh, was a, f- a proud pirate. Um, but enough about East Carolina. Uh, Foss, or, uh, sorry, uh, Beasley and Brown. The two big signings in the uh, in the off season each have one catch. Fine, they're going to be the two biggest targets. I think one reflects the long game. One reflects the ability to work out of the slot. Um, what do we think about Robert Foster at this point? He's got to be at the ones. I think he has to be. So what's going? Like, all right, I don't know. I'm. I'm, it's interesting. Like right now, his spot is at best fourth on this team. He's right? More deserving a number one and start with the starters. I mean, Zay Jones. You're gonna put him above Zay Jones? I would. Boy, I don't know about that. When Zay, he's in the game, he I still think Jones gets open. Yeah, I still think Jones him. is a better. I don't know, Wait, but it was such a flash, right? Like the whatever it was the last six or seven games, it felt like a guy who was hurt all through college. You kind of he slipped through the cracks. You found him. What are you going to do with him? And I don't know. I, I'm not sure where his role is on this team right now. It's interesting because a lot of the camp reports are that Andre Roberts and guys like that are outperforming him in terms of just you right. know drills and everything. But I don't know. I, 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 I'm with Justin, actually. I, I think at this point now you can you can run both of them with the ones at different points and see what you get. But if, if I'm getting two catches on five targets, a drop over the middle from Zay Jones, and he's hurt already and – Less than a quarter. So I mean, yeah, one John, of them was John, a, John one Brown of them was is what coverage. Foster you want Foster to turn. So into. you guys are saying in a three in a three wide out set, you would go with Beasley, Brown, and Foster. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I obviously the, you're going to rotate these guys too, so you're not tied. Oh yeah, no, information, yeah. But I was on the record last year saying I don't think Foster's as good as everyone thinks he is. I think he was the product of a team with no wide receivers, and he made some big plays. You see these guys, whether it's like. Taylor Gabriel, right? Like these guys that are just burners who make good plays and have their big weeks, but in the grand scheme of things, they are not good wide receivers. I know that sounds like really blanket statement, but I think he's going to get lost in the sauce because I think John Brown is better than him. I think Cole Beasley is better than him. I'm with you. I think he's stuck at four or five. Well, on Beasley's the depth a chart. slot guy, so that kind of yeah, but just on really the depth makes chart. Him there. Yeah, but on the depth chart, he's going to be down the fourth or fifth. What, guy. what is Robert Foster's best quality? At this point, like everybody else kind of has the the more defined, like one's a slot, one's a speedster, one's a possession. What is Robert Foster's role then? That's I, I'm not at, saying you have to have that defined sure. role, but what is it if he's not one of those three guys, right? Because he's consistent, reliable. I mean, I view him as another outside threat. I don't think he has a role that's maybe different than what you envision John, John Brown's Brown, role right. being. So maybe you don't want to play them at the same time on the it, field at all times. And so it makes sense if you're building off of what is presumed to be a strength of Josh Allen's and, right, his arm and the strength. ability to go long, then, yeah, running two out there and then having Beasley and Jones or whoever stay back as kind of safety valves for him. I totally get that. Um and Isaiah, I don't McK- know, I Isaiah just, McKenzie gets into that same conversation because yeah. he's a speed, speedy guy. I, I, yeah, he's I a different kind th- of think you could guy. kind sure. of say Ray Ray McLeod, too. Sure. So there's a lot of redundancy, I think, in, in some of these wideouts. Andre Roberts, I don't... I don't think Ray Ray makes his team. I think I do think McLeod is, is, the, uh, is one of the guys that will get cut or, or sent to the practice, uh, to the practice team. But um, <clears throat> anybody else? David Sills 
just you know remember how he was gonna go to Canton after they signed him as an undrafted <laughs> free agent and did not look great. He had a bad penalty, bad drop. A you know a near record setting wide out at West Virginia, but just Give him time. I don't think he's yeah me. Maybe you can throw him on the practice squad. <laughs> I, or, I don't think there's any danger of someone taking him off the practice squad at all. I, I don't either at this point. Well, Sills wasn't yeah. drafted, wasn't he? No, no was that's what I'm saying. He was an undrafted free yeah, agent. that's so, no risk throwing him down there. But other than that, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, McKenzie well, walked out of this game with first-team reps uh, in practice the next he day. He looked good. I mean... He's a speedy guy. I mean, he's he's definitely a kind of like a gadget player. Yeah. I don't think he's got the route tree he's a necessary weapon, yeah. to be... Can he play special teams? He's returned kicks. Yeah, yeah. so... He's, he's going to make the team as a returner. Yeah, he'll probably get a little small to cover kicks. He's going to make the team as a returner 100%. Yeah. And I think if you're looking at the receivers and you figure maybe they, they keep five, they could probably keep six, it's going to be Jones, Brown, Beasley, Foster, McKenzie, and then probably Andre Roberts because that guy plays a whole heap and load of special teams. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good situational weapon. He can definitely go out there and make plays with the ball in his hands. Needs the opportunities. Yeah, they, 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 the only creativity I feel like the offense had last year was in ways that they used Isaiah McKenzie once it came over from Denver. He, re- he reminds me of a, um, a bit of a uh, Randall Cobb or a um, Tavon Austin. Let's wait and see what the offense is this year. They had a rookie quarterback last year and a guy off the streets, Matt Barkley. And for all intents and purposes, they have a rookie quarterback this year. Yeah, I mean, he true. hasn't played. The guy hasn't even played 16 games, and the jury he hasn't is still even played out. 10, has he? Uh, it's close to that if it is 10. You're right. So. You know, it's I remember be. he missed a few weeks due to injury. Mm-hmm. Defensively, again, not a whole lot to talk about. I, Tremaine Edmonds is getting a lot of um, second-year leap kind of conversation uh, at this point, and I don't think there's any reason to doubt his abilities. I, Of all the picks that they made, that one seemed like it was going to pay off pretty quickly, and uh, all, the, all the indications are that he's really going to be that anchor that the defense needs and kind of that rock. He kind of, because everything has to go back to the Carolina Panthers. He kind of plays that Luke Keekley role where he solidifies the middle of the field and the linebacking core and everything kind of runs through him and he can basically do it all. One thing I was impressed about with the defense and maybe not as even as much as the play is just the, the defensive line depth appears to be a lot better than it's been in the past couple of years in terms of the rotation. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got, Guys like Eddie Yarbrough was going in there still late in the fourth quarter because he was he needed to get his looks. They were pretty deep on the defensive line, and there were guys who were out there incapable of generating pressure through the entire length of the game. And then they also went out and signed Sam Acho recently after yeah. cutting Vlad Dukas. I'm sure everyone's happy about yeah. that. It was the most <laughs> universally approved decision the Bills have made in a long your time. Favorite Dukas Dukas. Penalty. They don't have they don't have very much of their offensive line from last year left, do they? Dukas Mish. Thankfully not. Dukas Mish. <laughs> uh, no, they gone. don't. Dukas is gone. Yeah, they they've remade. I mean, the offensive line and the wide receiving core seem to be the the two primary focuses, and they they've done a good job with that. Did you guys uh, see but, the clip of? Uh, sorry, did you guys no. see the clip of Ed Oliver getting doubled? And he gave zero shits and shed both blocks and well, still got to the gap. He didn't get to the ball carrier, but like he, the left guard started blocking to the left. And when that guy was covered by the left tackle, he turns in and chips Oliver. And Oliver, in a matter of about a second and a half, and a half manages to disengage from both of them and get to his gap. And although he didn't stop the ball carrier, that I know it's preseason, but when I see that, I'm salivating because it's like that is awesome. Well, that's that's kind of what you're hoping for, right? Is he's he is undersized in the sense of what position he plays with that Oliver, but when he's motivated between his technique and his power, he's really one of a kind. Right, and and this is a guy in college, too, who saw all sorts of double teams because not only was he playing like a pure nose tackle position at points in his college career, there's not exactly a level of NFL talent around him on the Houston defensive line, so... You're focusing he, your he, blocking scheme. He was around. it. Yeah. You're, so your entire blocking scheme is how do I contain that Oliver? So getting doubled and tripled basically all the time was what he was dealing with. Right. I, so this is a guy who's like, he feels that second guy coming in. He's not going to be like, oh, no, what do I do? He's like, all right, I'll just go. His, his worst season was his la- his junior year last year because he, he had some injuries. He had some issues with the coaching staff since dismissed to Houston. Um, there was a whole lot going on. But his his freshman and sophomore year, I mean, his freshman year, we're talking about like Indomitian Sioux levels of like if you ever saw Indomitian Sioux in the in the, I think it was the 2010 Big 12 championship game <laughs> against Texas where he just Texas hung on by the skin of their teeth and Sioux almost won the Heisman that day. He was that incredible, that unblockable. 
and Oliver playing in a low in a lower league, same level. He he saw East Carolina uh, in the AAC, and you know it's not no he wasn't going up against uh, you know Alabama's offensive line on a weekly basis, but he was playing against some pretty good guys, some guys that are in the NFL now and very successful at that level, and so. The potential's all there. Is it the consistency going to be there game over game? Probably not. I think that's a lot to ask, especially for a defensive lineman to make a game. You know, in, unless your name is like Jerron Curse, uh, I, really tough for rookies to make that kind of impact on the defensive line and a different position. True. In, in the same sense, but he's he's going to have a couple highlight reels. I mean, this is a guy who was before last season when he did dip down a little bit was considered in a lot of early mock drafts to be considered as a number one pick not a first round pick a number one pick so there's a reason that people saw him through two years and whether it was flashbacks to sue or any of those great defensive players i mean a kind of guy like almost like khalil mack too at a different position just capable of taking over a game for a team that maybe wasn't the most talented on paper a guy who can keep your defense and your team in games and that's a Big changer as Bill goes in and drops his coconut water directly on his microphone. I already intended. drank it all. This is Vita Coco coconut water original flavor. Justin, try it. It's good. You don't it's like great. it? It's <laughs> great. You, you just never got into the coconut game. The floor loves it. Yeah. Delish. <laughs> well, the defense is fine. What did you guys think of uh, Tyree Jackson? Two for ten, but a lot of those are drops. He made Laser one beams. really, really nice throw downfield that I can't see how they actually overturned to an incompletion. But I wasn't really Foster. Yeah, now, he made a really, really nice pass to, down the side. There's a was a corner out. He just dropped it over the shoulder. It's a beautiful throw. I, so, ideally, he develops and can eventually be your backup because him and Josh Allen are a lot more similar than him and Matt Barkley. Correct. And Here's I my- am a fan of having your two quarterbacks be able to run the same system or else you you know with the exception of the joe flacco to lamar jackson he's handoff my, last year he's my it doesn't take. always work that well he's my justin of the hot take of the week how much of a higher higher ceiling does josh allen have than tyree jackson and they're both those huge big arm guys that can't read a defense yeah. that run and they're both big. I, it was a it was a surprise to me that Jackson <laughs> didn't Sorry, get advance. that didn't get he didn't get drafted because yeah. I think that mm-hmm. he thought that he was going and to Anthony be Johnson, picked right? and Anthony Johnson. Johnson didn't get taken either. Um, he's in a good spot. I don't know if they're going to carry three quarterbacks on the roster this season. I think they would prefer not to. Can you get him down to the practice squad? I don't think anyone's going to take him day one off the practice Probably not day one, one, but I do think he might get picked up throughout the course of the season. Yeah, but Justin, he has not hurdled any linebackers, so I'm not impressed. I get it. (laughs) But you you also, (laughs) you also, you know, that we have seen large quarterbacks who have been hyped up who end up not succeeding. Logan Thomas, you know, once was... Logan Thomas different than Josh Allen, but I'm saying, like, played a little level football he's not, in college. I mean, he's not as good a, a passer as Josh Allen, and Josh yeah. Allen right now sucks as a passer, to... so I, you know, if you're worse than the 52% passer, <laughs> then you're probably... I mean... <laughs> then you're you, about one of us. Right, well, so is the ceiling higher? I don't necessarily know. I think Allen, at this point, I as good of a athlete as Jackson was last season, I think Josh Allen's probably a better runner. Mm. Well, wasn't um, the consensus on Jackson that he could have done well for himself if he stayed in college another year to get that extra he, year? He probably experience? could have. I think, yeah, there was, it's interesting that UB could have had a, the, a pretty good team come back. Someone in. told Some him he was going to get drafted. Yeah, That's I think he got a promise that he was going to be a sixth or seventh rounder. And well, he was in, wasn't he in form. the transfer portal and things too? Like he was exploring yes. all of his options. Yes, he was. Basically every single option except for coming back to UB. Right. So I actually bought a video game thing off of off the Facebook Marketplace from a UB, a bunch of linemen. We were talking for a while. I was like, where do you think uh, Terry's going to go? He goes, I got he's going to second round. Wow. And second wow. round. I was like, wow. yeah, that's what I heard from. Yeah. So what is the Facebook marketplace like? I've never actually journeyed on there. It's like any other marketplace. It's hard to... It's like cool. Craigslist, but someone cleaned it up a little bit first. Yeah, pretty much. No one responds to you. We bought a dresser off of it. It was great. All right. 100%. Well, I guess I got to hop on this Facebook marketplace thing. Yeah, I'm not saying they're, they're close. That would be an interesting question to see you guys. Well, I'm sure I, he heard it from the same people that Jackson was hearing it from, though. I mean, I'm sure he's not sitting... A, he's got people he's talking to, whether those people were 
taking his best interests into mind or not, that's a just different kind of discussion. But yeah, you know, ultimately their best interests are him making <laughs> the league. So right, right. Um, yeah, he's he is the, much rawer than mm-hmm. than Allen. But it is I do remember. I think it was SB Nation actually wrote an article comparing Jackson to Allen before the draft, saying here's a guy that's similar to Josh Allen that you don't have to pay all the draft capital for. Mm-hmm. So the potential is there. Like I said, I like matching my guys up. So if you can get two similar quarterbacks in terms of, you know, like big guys, big arms, some athleticism there, although I think Allen is more athletic than Jackson, that's that's a good fit to me. Yeah, Jackson, he's kind of reminds me of sometimes when he's when he runs, he's like a baby deer out there. He's kind of flailing tall. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, not quite sure. Not quite like grown into his body, um, but yeah, we'll see what comes of it. I, I think you're in better shape if Jackson's the yeah. the quarterback oh. of the future because it's not like Matt Barkley's going to do anything. Right? We know what Matt Barkley is at this point, and yeah. he's not. You know, maybe this, he can come in and, and manage a game or two, but you don't want him to keep doing it over and over. At the same time, I'm not rushing to shoehorn Jackson into the number. No, two no, 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 right no, no, no. What we saw last year from Barkley, and I know it's the Jets. You did okay when he came in in an emergency role. Now, I don't want 16 games of that, anything remotely resembling 16 games of that. But at this point, I'm still much more comfortable with Matt Barkley in that role until he comes you get in, Jackson he's, in. He's hitting guys in stride. Like, Josh Allen didn't play bad, but the completions he made were guys stopped, standing still looking at him. Barkley comes in and starts hitting guys in slants, <laughs> hitting guys in stride on fly routes. Barkley's a better pure passer. Yeah. Sure. And But a lot of what we, like, we have seen with Josh Allen this season, we've heard of, the games or the you know the the scrimmages where he was hitting everybody in stride, everything looked great, and then we've heard where he was just awful and the overthrows and underthrows. I mean, you can tell it all depends on where he puts the ball. We we saw him skipping passes on the turf, and we saw him overthrowing guys by ten yards on 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 Thursday. He's got to get that consistency. You got to at least get it to the point where your your receivers can make a catch, right? Get their hands on it, let them do their job, and we're not even at that point right now with Josh Allen. But with the athleticism, that and that's the biggest thing to me, right? Is, is he's a baller? Is, is this athleticism? A fucking baller. Yeah, and I think the guy is. I mean, as far as like the intangible thing of leadership, whatever that is, it certainly seems like he has it. So it's funny. I, I don't think he's great, but he's like the first quarterback in a long time. I'm not like worried about it at all. Like it's goofy. I again, he, he I just need to it. see this development, quote unquote. Yeah. yeah, he he is a quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's a leader of men, which is an important thing for quarterbacks to have because there's a bunch well, that, that don't have that. That's one thing we noticed all of last year, though, is he had the mentality and he has like the he has it in his mind. He just needs the physical tools to line up with what with his mind to right. be able. He, he'd be a good quarterback. Yep. So we'll see what comes of it. Big hands, huge, huge hands. hands. Draft Josh Allen dot com. Huge, job. like my hand, but. Bigger, but size. bigger. Yeah, you but can't bigger. see Bill's hand because it's an audio medium. I'm putting he's it holding right up, up his hand. Mic and he had I don't a salad know grip in that coconut water. Though. I did. It was really good. That's, that's why he dropped it right on his microphone. Palmed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got more <laughs> potassium than a banana. For God's sake, <laughs> that's their slogan. Uh, anything else? Anybody has? I hate. What the, do we think of the offensive line? Obviously, it's hard to gauge without Mitch Morse. Morse it's going to be better, but. I mean, for the most part, it looks like they gave Josh time. They didn't. They didn't really look I like think, they collapsed on themselves. I think. Do you think they so? Do you think they came out with eleven straight passes with the starters for Josh Allen or for the O line to see both. to see who's I, doing what? Both. Yeah, you have to say both. Probably, yeah. maybe a slight lean towards the offensive line. I, I, mean, I do yeah. think they're going to have if they want to be successful this year. They're going to have to pass it more. Mm. Like they, it's Cole very. This is going to be huge. You can tell he's yeah. going to be a huge difference maker. He gets separation quick. He's yeah, gonna get, He's gonna be the first guy to push seventy five catches that the Bills have had. He's in quick too. He's forever. Really quick. Yeah, who was the last guy with seventy five catches? Stevie, <laughs> probably oh, Stevie. Probably. Yeah. Maybe Lee Evans after that. They not. It's wide out. Success has not been something that's no. been a trait of uh, I, recent. I continually Bills go squads. back to the year when Moltz had a hundred receptions and Peerless Price had like ninety seven, and Bledsoe threw for almost five thousand yards, and that they didn't make the playoffs that year. But it no, was just but they like, threw it a ton. Yeah. Fitz may have, yeah, it, it's got to be Stevie. Him and Fitz had a pretty good connection there towards the end. Um, I mean, I hate Stevie w- did have what three thousand yard seasons in a row there. Yeah, three or that four was years. his that was his career basically. Yep. Oh yeah, no, he he is he will go into the Hall of Fame as a Bill. 
Uh, I have confidence in saying that. And now he's a media member, according to him. Stevie <laughs> I Johnson. remember three three years. He's got a podcast. He's into media. That's so right. th- three years was half of his career stats. Yeah, he did not have a very long NFL career. He did it 79. So no, 82, th- 76, and 79 catches. In no, three, year, three years is three quarters of his career stats or more. Yeah, 82, 82 in 2010, 76 in 2011, 79 in 2012. So, yeah, picture we're pretty consistently getting over that 75 catch threshold yeah, here. But we cannot forget the time that God made him drop a ball. We can never, ever forget that. Why? Why did he do that? Why, to him? God? Why? Uh, oh, you're. <laughs> Justin's now pulling up Sammy Watkins. Sorry. These will disappoint you. Oh, yeah, he did get over 1,000 yards that one year. <laughs> the first sure two years were great. Did. Sammy's good. He make it, That's he, a good yard per reception there. A great He's a good receiver. He sure got paid a whole lot of money to catch 40 balls last year. He was he? hurt. He missed most of the season. That's the problem always is that he's hurt all the time. That That's is it. consistently what he, he is. He, I mean, got, if, he got the foot injury. He's in a permanent boop. state of injured. The permanent state of injured. Him and EJ Gaines is going to be roommates for the rest of their lives. For real. Like Sam, I mean, a healthy Sammy damn. Watkins makes a difference. He's a good player. Sure. Healthy Sammy if you Watkins can get him the ball, If you can get him the ball more, a healthy Sammy Watkins... Remember Damn, that one game? I think the, the day, the first time I ever met Bill and Justin when we called that basketball game together, the Bills were playing a game against Kansas City. I remember where Sammy game. Watkins got injured catching a touchdown pass with no one around. Yeah, I forgot about that. It was wide open. That oh, was, was that the one where he went like went off in yeah. that first half? Yeah, and did nothing the second half because they went away from him. He got injured. He got injured. In that's, the end, that's zone. why they went away. Not from getting him. tackled. Very very injury. I forgot all about that. Yeah. It's a great moment in podcast history. Didn't uh, EJ Gaines get put on IR this week? Yeah, this time Captain yes. Wonderland. Yeah, Man, he's good. The best name in the NFL. He's healthy. Well. Is. is it long? Is it designated return or is he done? I think they're I, all. I think they're all designated return now. I think you only, he's but you only get one. Return. But you only get one. I think you get one. Yeah, that's right. You I think get, you get one no matter what. One matter they're what. all eligible, and you only get one. I believe. But you have to mark. Probably them. wrong. Though. You have to mark them eligible to return. When you put him on, yeah, you don't get to change it. Oh, okay. It's tough, man. I thought he like, was, I thought they, I thought like they Waddle, changed the rule. Sorry, no. Waddle's done for the year because they, he tore his quad and is on IR, and I think he is too. I feel bad for him because you know him, 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 and his wife both seem generally excited to be part of Bill's mafia. And oh, she was boop. living it up on Twitter with them. Yes, that was, she embraced it more than any spouse I've seen really uh, in the in the past half decade or so. So yeah, I mean, I'm disappointed for the player too. They they did seem to genuinely like it here, and I imagine they will still be presents at the uh, at the field at some point. Um, anything else? I hate wearing white on white at home. Not a fan of that. It's weird having kids pop the color. One. It is. I know why they did it because they don't want to do it on the week four game when you don't plan on playing anyone important. Yeah, but it's weird, kind of. There's no worse yeah. schedule. Like preseason's dumb and long and is, is overbearing anyway. But really, having home games week one and four, it like yeah, makes, makes doesn't it, even yeah, matter. Yeah. Yeah. Even the little bit that you would normally care. Yeah. Like the only games that are really important to watch are games two, two and, three and three because right. at least one of those games, Josh Allen's going to play a half football. Presumably. But we're bringing back the Lions series, which I'm excited Thank about. God. The Ralph Wilson Memorial Exhibition series. <laughs> it's back. Yeah, I remember just every every week four of the preseason was Lions. Just every time we would just it was scrub v scrub games of four field, Ralph Wilson Stadium, all the great spots. Silver Dome, Silver Dome, the Grand Pontiac Silver Dome, the historic one. Can I soapbox for a minute before we go away from this game? Go ahead, Bill. You watch a lot of college football. I do. What is the most enduring Chad Kelly college football highlight to you? <laughs> and why is it the time that he was getting drilled and threw up a prayer that bounced to Ayabejo against Alabama and not a single good pass <laughs> he ever threw? Would you like to go on? <laughs> no, that's about it. it. Chad Kelly's an interesting guy um, because he, you know, he's swag Kelly, right? Like he led an old Miss renaissance and was much better than Bo Wallace, who he replaced. And I mean, Hey, Chad Kelly won a Sugar Bowl. Can't take that away from him, right? You can't. You can't take that away from him. You can't take. You can't just say, "Oh, he's that doesn't deserve a chance in the NFL." But no, I think at this he was point also. Me, I mean, he was a highly. Think about. He was an elite eleven quarterback. Think about where Chad Kelly's life is if he stays at Clemson and he's competing with and possibly like 
starting ahead of a guy named Deshaun Watson. I mean, in an alternate <laughs> reality, Chad Kelly could have been playing not just in a New Year's Six game, but potentially on a playoff national team playing for a national championship. But <laughs> Chad Kelly did not do that. Right. Uh, for and and was ran off the team and has had behavioral issues in the past and he's got himself in a lot of trouble multiple times and yeah i mean look he's the 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 highs are high um but it's really tough to when somebody is a backup and they're not quite at the point where they have the ability to start and look that denver team last year he had a chance if he played his car, if he just kept his nose clean, I, he could have been starting for that team. I don't know how good he would have been. I don't know if he gets another chance elsewhere, but he could have been starting. And now I don't know if he's going to make this team or not. I mean, you got, besides Andrew Luck, you got Jacoby Brissett. It's like that pretty clearly is, are the two Colts guys, unless they yeah, trade he'll be a third Brissett quarterback if he's, if he the makes team. the team. Yeah. I, I guess my point is this is that he got drafted. Because of who his uncle is, because this, otherwise I don't think that John Elway takes a quarterback as Mister Rell. I don't think his name is yeah. If his last name isn't Kelly, right? And no. then he gets a free pass, kind of for his behavioral issues, because you know he's a white athlete in the NFL, and he said and he, he gets sorry. re-signed by Indianapolis because the Indianapolis coach, Colts coach is Frank Reich. Yep, he's, there's a lot of connections yeah, with that. Like there's a lot of physical talent and ability. Like He's a good athlete. Like I watched him play every single game when he went to St. Joe's. Mm-hmm. I was at every single one of those home games. Mm-hmm. And there's so much more to being an NFL quarterback, and a good NFL quarterback specifically, than just being able to run fast, making a fifth-string defensive end miss on a read option. He does does not strike me as the kind of guy who has any sort of mental makeup to be more than a third quarterback, maybe a second quarterback, if he really keeps himself together for a long period of time. I think there's an argument to be made that he could develop in a league and be better than a guy like Jacoby Brissett by leaps and bounds. But I just don't see it. And people will not, <laughs> apparently people get really mad if you go onto Twitter.com and you insinuate that Chad Kelly is not what his uncle is. And I think in this city we have a connection to Jim Kelly for a good reason, especially certain generations of football fans that maybe I don't have. But at some point, we just have to realize that there's a reason that we didn't draft him. We didn't bring him in. We didn't bring in that guy from Syracuse for the same Ryan Nassib or whatever people were clamoring for. Yep. We have this weird kind of hometown cling to anything remotely Buffalo, but only the glory days part of it. Yeah. And we well, can just and the Nassib admit that Chad Kelly's was, average and move on with our lives. Yeah. Nassib was the whole Doug Marone connection, too, right. from Syracuse. So there was that as well. Yeah. Look, I, you know, maybe he's not the worst quarterback in the league but he certainly has gotten a couple additional chances because of who his what his family lineage is but people always want to bet on that we were talking in in earlier uh you know the three best players right now in the toronto blue jays now they've proven it but their dads are all hall of famers or near hall of famers right so you know three players there are second generation like it makes sense to keep going to the bloodlines um but yeah we'll We'll see if he sticks. I, you know, even if he's cut by the Colts, could he be signed to a practice squad or, you know, signed, picked up midseason, something like that? I could see it happening again. But, sure. uh, yeah. He, like you were saying with uh, uh, Jackson, that there's going to be injuries during the season and some teams might need to pick up a quarterback oh, yeah, I, at some point. Is I think he, Chad's much more NFL ready at this point. Like the Bills like last year. Right. I mean, yeah. they picked up anybody they could. Yeah. Is Anderson, Ch- Barkley, Chad Kelly Derek one of the. Anderson and Matt Barkley. S- 65 best <laughs> in terms of talent 65 best people on the planet right now that play the position of quarterback probably um but he's probably in the uh you know Lower he's he's that. much he's much uh he's well below 100 when it comes to like mental makeup right yeah and trevor lawrence is about 20 spots ahead of him. Uh, yeah i just realized there's a lot of ncaa quarterbacks i would take ahead of him too so we'll see what comes of it um he, uh, it was, you know, homecoming of sorts. He did whatever. It was fine. He outplayed Tyree Jackson. So, so there, point proven. Yeah, I was very <laughs> wrong. If you got into a dispute with me on Twitter.com, clearly you are right and I am wrong. And you said that was your friend that was on face or uh, Twitter talking to you about that? No, no Fellow, idea. That guy oh, is. no, no idea. No. Okay, very yeah. good. All right. Well, speaking of a uh, weird, oh, that was a terrible transition. Justin, you'll fix that in post, right? No. Okay. Rasmus Ristolainen. 
We got to talk about it. You know, apparently, if you say hockey isn't fun because you lose all the time in Sweden, <laughs> Finland wasn't this a Finnish outlet? Not trying to be that guy. He is Finnish. No, yeah, whatever. Ristolainen told Finland's to MTV wow. Sports that recent seasons and MTV have been is really tough. branched out over there. Yeah, mm-hmm. MTV Sports, and of course, that is Norway's number one sports channel. <laughs> And the Icelandic defenseman said that he does not want to play anymore, uh, essentially, and that he's the second straight uh, player to lose a smile. So we got this Dutch defenseman that doesn't want to do anything. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm just tired of all these Danes coming over here and thinking that they can just do whatever. I wish Bill had a storyboard for those last three lines he just dropped, just like (laughs) pointing over here. like What? uh, On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is it that Risto just texted Ryan O'Reilly? I was like, hey, what was it again that you said that got you out of here? And phrase it a little bit differently so it now, doesn't look like I copied you. Well, because you got to run it through Google Translate to understand <laughs> yeah, what you're saying. It's a little bit different, yeah. yeah. I mean, French language is totally different. So He actually said, I'm, I'm not happy when I'm not playing hockey. But oh. then when they translated right. it, he said, I hate hockey. He so. was actually listening to Garbage's I'm Only Happy When It Rains, yeah. and it got completely mistranslated. Completely anyway. NHL.com even shared an article. NHL.com said he said in an interview that... I will be at an NHL training camp this season. Well, that's Germans say, for you. Yeah, which I, one does at I can't, be, I can't believe the Buffalo News, this great pinnacle of sports journalism in this economy, would possibly in any way, shape, or form misrepresent his quote. Did you play. see did you see who wrote that? Well, was it Harrington? Staff. Oh, okay. Not even like I was so I clicked on it the article because how could you not, right? And I open it up and it's very easy, it's behind a written paywall. by staff. Oh. I'm like, what? Shout like so, you mean to tell me the biggest? Well, they can't story? send Mike Harrington to Russia all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. Like, this is a huge story, and there's nobody even to stand behind it. Like, so the analytics community says wrist line and sucks. The non-analytics community says that he's a pretty good player. Well, the um, Sabers have sucked analytically for the past fucking eight years. So. I don't know what the Sabers he's, do analytically or not. He's the best defenseman on the world, the league's worst team in the past decade. I mean. All right, so you got this giant Portuguese defender, and now you got to figure <laughs> out what you're going to do with him. I it seems to me like he's going to be not in not, he's not in their be camp. Here. I got to think they're not going to. I be. just got to get something for him. I don't want him to go there. But what is what something? Is the market for him? I don't know what the market now is. Almost nothing. who has space? I think it, he was overvalued. It is nothing. I think he was overvalued, and the last possible team to trade him to was Tampa, who just signed Kevin Shattenkirk for way too much money. Like, what him. if Ottawa says we'll give you a. a I don't know, set no. third rounder. I want to get him. Keep him out of division. Out of- I mean, I'm, I maybe my opinion's different. Like, if we're not going to get something worth it for him, then why are we moving on? Is there a benefit to us that we well, would just rather for jet one? They're over the team? salary cap, and they have to move on from someone. Yeah. No, they don't. They, they don't they absolutely have. do not with IR. They absolutely do not. So then, but when guys are going to get healthy, and sure. then what do you do? Keep them on IR. Is that how I mean, we're going to do it? That's absolutely an option. Don't I mean, act, I don't guess act it like a, it's not. It's they not, could bury Bogosian if they wanted to. And that would be a shitty thing to do, but they could do it. They could. Yeah, I'm not saying they will or that they should, but it's an option. They they are they are cap compliant with injured reserve, and I know that seems weird, but they are. I just i I think he's I think Ristolin is the one getting traded. He's the one making all the noise. He's the squeaky wheel, and I think everybody's a lot of a lot of people are going to be pissed about the return. He just needs to call and talk to Ralph Kruger and everything will be fixed. Yeah, Which Ralph's is funny. People are, going to, people are going to be mad about the return, but a few days ago I was seeing links to him being sent to Anaheim for Ricard Raquel. Well, that would that be is great. not be sweet. Sure. That I'll is not happening. That. Yeah, I don't want him traded, but for Ricard Raquel, I'll that would n- sign I, me up. I said that, would, Anna, that is he, Raquel is projected to be Anaheim's top scorer mm-hmm. this year. I don't think you're giving up... Um, Basically, a mid-level defenseman for your another well, team's the, top scorer. The trick score. is that if you trade all your top scorers, eventually Rasmus Ristolainen will become your top scorer. That's a great point. Just keep trading all your forwards, and Ristolainen will be up there eventually. Yeah. So he's a great two-way defender or something like that. I, that tall Spaniard leading his team in so many facets. One of the greatest Italian players in the history of the league. <laughs> I said I said at some point during the last third or last quarter of the season about how I think the Sabres this offseason just need to get rid of anybody who was here during the tank years. Just per Yeah. Palmerville, Larson's, Gergensen's, Ryan any, Hart, Eichel. Any sour grapes. Even get rid of a uh, fucking Sabaka. You guys doesn't like to be here. There's, well, gotta, there's, obviously, there's obviously some. Remember you had Cooper on a while ago? And there's something going on in that locker room. Sabaka is the one. But there's something lingering, and it's got to be from that. There's so much animosity. So then why do they resign Larson? Because Gergensen's? they don't know what they're doing. Why do they sign both of them? Right. One of them, okay, baby. Yeah. Both of them. 
I, I, and Remy Ellie. Let, lest we forget, they also re-signed Remy Ellie, a very important key piece to this team last year. They also traded a guy over as could prepare the team from uh, Europe. Rootsalainen? Rootsalainen. Rootsalainen, of course, he's Czech. So he's from Prague. I think they got a just purge a team of that shit. I think it's still it's still around. You know they only picked up root, roots aligning so that they could convince someone to trade for roots aligning and then send them the wrong guy. It's kind of like the old Adrian Peterson thing, the Bears <laughs> yeah. Adrian Peterson. And you Adrian convince Peterson. your buddy to trade for Adrian Peterson, the Bears running back, without looking at three in the morning. See, there's yeah. theirs goes dun 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 dun, and ours goes dun 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 dun. dun. Ooh. Totally yeah. different. Root, roots aligning the ice ice baby of the Sabres hockey <laughs> universe. <laughs> uh. Camp is coming up in about a month. Is Rasmus Ristolainen with the Sabres, Justin? After this week, after this, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think there is any way you can, Jeff. I've been saying it since about two months ago. I, he, we've been talking about Rasmus Ristolainen getting traded since before the trade deadline, and we've never had anything more than we've been talking about like, oh, for a year and a half. Now. Oh, he'll go to Tampa. I, I believe, and I, I've said this before this offseason. At this point, he is 100% for me here by camp, and he's not going anywhere until the trade deadline next year at the earliest. Mike? Because at this point, they're not going to trade him for nothing. I don't think you're going to. I don't think. I don't think. Nope. (laughs) And I'm. Anaheim would be stupid to do that. that. So, I mean, you got to have Amazing. somebody that can put the puck in the net. I'll change my opinion really quickly if they offer Raquel, by the way. Sure. Yeah, if that's the offer. Steve, what do you think? I think he's here. They, I've said this so many times. They're a team that doesn't have a lot of good players and mm-hmm. trying yeah. to unless, good players. Unless can... somebody gets so desperate for a second pair defenseman that they're willing to give up something for him, something decent for him, he's still here. Well, he's paid like a second pair defenseman, and now with Darlene, he can be a second pair. I don't defenseman. think he needs to go anywhere. I don't I think agree. I don't think he's that bad. Well, we I don't were, think he's that good. I think, I think he has the potential to be a good player. So, I think this is all pretty manufactured by the Buffalo blogosphere. Honestly, well, to be I fair, the that, English translation was a little rough. I think that Botterill wants. Like would listen to a good offer for him, but I don't think he's going to sell him low because he doesn't need to. Like for the money, he doesn't hurt you. You know, he's not like Shattenkirk was hurting the Rangers enough to cut him. Like he's not hurting this team for the money they're paying him. He's really not. I don't think night in and night out when this team struggled, you'd point to Rista Line and say, "Boy, that guy really is the reason." No, like far from it. So I don't know. Right now, uh, Bottero's really kind of reminded me of Darcy Regeer. But it's, it's a bit of sweet because that's less than the team was good. Let me. Uh, but he's over, overvaluing players. Yeah. Except Regeer would get a first round pick for a guy like Paul Gostad. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, he also got dating Brief for Chris Grattan. Yeah, but right. Bottero's also gotten Skinner for Cliff Poo. He's yep. done a few of those himself. Yep. So let me read from noted Buffalo blogosphere uh, writer Ryan Lambert of uh, Yahoo Buffalo. Uh, it says he's talking about wrist line. He delivers plenty of value on the power play, hence his point production, but he gets absolutely speed bagged in his own end. Can't stop turning the puck over and all that kind of stuff leads to him being on the ice for 307 goals against a five on five in just the last five seasons. Again, Furthermore, 30 minutes a game. Again, if um, even Ristolainen and himself <laughs> thinks he's not going to be a Sabre when training camp opens, what is Botterell sitting around waiting for? This isn't going to be the trade that pushes the Sabres to the playoffs, but simply sending him elsewhere will make them harder to play against. Disagree. I think Rist- I think Rasmus is very hard to play against. So. Ask El Trovescan. <laughs> Well, he pile drives the best player in the league every time he plays against him. When he gets traded, you and I are going to fly to Warsaw. We're going to drink some of that Ukrainian beer, and we are going to toast to the great Turk as he wanders off to Anaheim. I think he's the only tough defenseman the Sabres have to play against. Grit, heart, hustle. It's a it's a big important factor. He's the Bills' running game of the Sabres, (laughs) if you will. God, I hope we get into a real fight about this as training camp gets close because I, I think don't there's think, a lot of opinions. I don't and think I they forgot, should. Kevin Shattenkirk signed in Tampa, so that's the problem. I just said that. But more importantly, who are we going to bring into this podcast to debate with Bill later Steve. on this season? <laughs> now that Steve is already oh. here. Yeah. Oh shit, that was a lot. We're bringing a new guy <laughs> in like October, and then we can make a podcast. We can look back on three years from now where Rasmus Ant- Ristolainen is a five time Norris winner. I got it. Andrew Utero. There we go. <laughs> that guy, highlights and humor, uh, Eminem fan and all, uh, definitely <laughs> big we, free agent yeah. in the podcast world. I, I I don't think he'll be here, but I don't I don't think they should trade him. I like the guy. I I, don't, I think. Oh, it's, it's a long conversation. Yeah, and we've had it before, and we'll keep having it again. Anyway, good luck to Vatican City defenseman Rasmus Ristolainen on his uh, maiden voyage here. 
uh, through this uh, this wonderful off season. Is there any other Sabres notes that we need to hit? That Allmark number was kind of funny, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it's the way arbitration How much are you yeah, worth? Seven million dollars. <laughs> I get it from his campsite because obviously you want to pick the highest number you can so that you can try to maximize your client's value. I'm not going to hate him for that. Take a note to the Dan Prescott game. Boy, howdy. Does he, does he have to know that his seat is already like hot because of UPL? Oh, well, sure. Yeah. That, that even more the reason to try to maximize your earnings this year. Who is the number one goalie on this team next year? Carter Hutton. Carter Hutton. Yeah, flat, Carter Hutton. Yep. Flat out. All right. Well, can't go any further in conversation about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> worth a shot. I fine, whatever. Uh, Are there any of the nuts? When is when is the trade going to happen? They've like they can field two teams right now almost. What if they trade him to the Hurricanes for Cliff Poo? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get weird with this. Let's just go completely. Well, that would reverse the uh, do you, goodness of your uh, Jeff's. Somewhat reverse the goodness of your Jeff Skinner. Do you remember it's, it's the, you remember the because... time that the Minnesota Wild traded Nino Niederreiter for Ra- Victor Rask? Yeah, that was that's a yikes. <laughs> like so, like one they, of the they also just play. fired that GM. Yeah, Paul Fang got fired because uh, he know. like dude. Maybe he didn't even make it a full trade. year, did he? He no. made oh, just over a year because when you make suck ass trades like that, you don't get to have very long. <laughs> were the Hurricanes any good Kevin though Fiala. after getting Niederreiter? I don't know. Oh, that, I can't remember. I think they were half decent, as a matter of fact. It's funny because you look back at the trade, and if you like, if you traded Ristolainen for Cliff Poo, and that trade in retrospect just becomes Ristolainen for Jeff Skinner, that's actually amazing. However, it would just be the step you have to take that would make it look bad. You think Pominville is going to get signed anywhere? He'll go somewhere. He'll, he'll, get, like, he'll, get, a he'll P- get like a one he'll year, get one PTO year yeah, somewhere. One one point five, right? I think he'll get, no, I think he would have already. I think he'll get a PTO, maybe yeah, like yeah. Giannis. Remember Giannis last oh, yeah, year? That's right. I'd rather have Palmer over Larson and Gerson. I would agree with you on that. So, what are you guys? What are your guys' expectations for Skinner? Realistically, so I heard the instigators talking to Ronick, and Ronick seems to like not think he's going to put forty in. He thinks it was because it was a contract year, or whatever. He's Ronick's got him at like twenty eight, and I think if he's healthy I, and plays a full season next to Jack. I think he could get twenty eight in his sleep, but I, I think he'll get seventy five to eighty. But prop <laughs> or points, sorry, probably should clarify. <laughs> he's Pro- like, this isn't a big deal. I think he's going to score eighty goals. But just thinking of more almost a goal a game. That's to fine. Shout out to um, no. I think he'll get seventy five to eighty points. I think f- I, I think thirty five to forty of that's on from goals. I if he gets thirty four goals, is it like a massive disappointment? Probably not. It it pro- it shouldn't be, but. You never know, um, but he if he can stay in that goal every you know two to three game range, well thirty two to two and a half range. Fine. I think we're fine with that. But Eichel gets a point a game, and people are pissed that he's making ten million dollars like he doesn't do enough. Yeah, and because assists don't matter, right? But yeah. Skinner is going to be. I think Skinner's going to be in trouble if he only scores scores thirty five. Now I have. I think that's a great season, but. I think fans expect him to pot 50 this year. Like, yeah, we'll it see depends what, on what's going on around him, too. Like, if he's scoring 35, but Jack and whoever else plays at that wing are also going for comparable numbers, then no one's talking about it because that's a trio that's just dominating. But if Skinner gets 30, Jack gets 20, and Olison gets 15 on that line, for example, then you talk about it because then everyone's, everyone's going to be beaten down the door no matter what he does. People will think he's not doing enough for his contract. But so he's got to pace together a respectable second line and then that first line gets so much better automatically yeah oh absolutely they they gotta figure something out there and i feel like the, the sabers are gonna be the team it's, it's a, do some dumb shit where uh olifson is not on the starting lineup <laughs> olifson with larson and gergensen's day one you heard it here first so he's not gonna be in the lineup he's gonna be in rochester we think he needs he can use some more seasons well, worse yet they're gonna scratch him I'm not he's, happy with gonna, a, he's gonna be scratched i'm happy with this two-way game at this cj smith remy ellie victor olifson you guys Thompson, are dogging the LED deal, and I'm not. Seven hundred grand for a good AHL player. I'm still really pissed off about the Larson Nurses thing. Like they got Rasmus Asplund, who's yeah. like ready, and he's his last year in his contract, I think, and his ELC, I think. He's fast too. He's a good player. He's yeah, he's he's fast. Is what in uh, what Larson Nurses aren't. I don't know. Well, we're bringing five hundred people in. Some of these players have got to stick, right? Yeah, they're actually just doing an amazing race, and the winning uh, team gets to suit up for the Buffalo Sabers. All throughout the great countries of Europe that we haven't mentioned yet, exclusively. I, I'm just, I'm just like I really. There's at least four more. Mad about the Sabers right now. Like this is, I'm not happy. Like I've, I've been really like optimistic about the Sabers for a while, but this this offseason is like. But we talked about what this. the fuck are they doing? But they were never doing going. Anything. But no, they've done a lot of things. You're thinking of all the bad things that they've done, and because none of the moves that they could do could get them above. We've already talked about this. Their division is stacked. 
it's going to be impossible for them to break into the top three of this division right now. Mm-hmm. And then they got to fight with Florida I must say and they Montreal. Do. I, Sorry. No, I'm just I'm just telling you. Like you keep getting mad about things. I don't know what your expectations are. You're you're being they unrealistic. The team. They gonna, did improve the team. Who? Marcus Johansson and Jimmy VC. Yes, and Colin, those guys are number four improve defender. The team. What the Miller. fuck do you want him to get? I'm sorry, a 50 defenders. goal scorer wasn't available. No, that was a 50 goal scorer. I'm sorry that you know they got to bring some offensive. Scott talent. Niedermeyer in his prime six, wasn't able to come into this players. game, Hopefully and I'm sorry we couldn't get Dominic Hasek to be the goaltender. Like I don't know what you want. That was my exact expectations. Thanks for nailing him on the head. Well, that seems to be what it is. And like you do, I don't like what they did in the last season. That's was, all you've been saying the entire offseason. That's what all Tell of what the fuck you want him to do. That's what all of uh, Sabres Twitter and Facebook and all that is saying is they don't like what they're doing this offseason. But they have to do it incrementally. You can't just snap a, your fingers, be I'll, the worst team in the league two years ago, and then run you know, to the, the Stanley Cup final. Saying, uh, all they got to do incrementally and not go for it all, but they've assigned. Marcus Johansson, Jimmy VC, you just gotta get. Well, <clears throat> you you keep digging that they're only finding like these bottom six guys. They've desperately needed that. They've needed guys right. beyond the first line. And, they had one line that could yeah. score last and year. Putting one. They've they had have, one line that's been able to score for like five if years. The third line is Erod Johansson and VC. That is markedly that's, better than any yes. third line they've had in a very long time. And, and you know what? Maybe they're not going to get to ninety points this year, but the team's going to be in a better spot than it was. I don't it's think going to be better. I don't think they're about to they are. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they are. Well, I, you guys are thinking that. I don't think they are. I I sincerely think they are. I really do. I think they're at least 10 points better yeah. than and It starts with the coaching down, too. The biggest move of the offseason might not even be any of the players. The biggest move of the offseason might be getting Ralph Kruger. That's my drum that I've been beating. He's fixing everything. As soon <laughs> no, as Rasmus wants to and calls Ralph Kruger, everything's going to be great. He's going to go back on the interview and say, hockey is my favorite thing ever. I Just love when I am playing hockey him. up here in the great nation of Luxembourg. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Adam TV. <laughs> <laughs> MT- yeah. MTV. And now here's TRL. Yeah. <laughs> I think this that's what the kids no are watching scrubs. on that show. Yeah. No scrubs by TLC. Um, yeah, like the, it's it's an organizational big shift going from Phil Housley to Kruger. Does Kruger fix a lot of things? I he don't fixes know. Fixes everything, Jeff. Everything. Maybe I'm a little bit more of a moderate in my appeal to Ralph Kruger than than Steve over here, who <laughs> wants to run through the nearest wall in his avid support. I of Ralph Southampton. Kruger. But I'm in. That's not a I'm European into country, it. Bill. I'm into. I'm into no. Ralph Kruger. I'm into seeing what he can do. And I think we're bearing the latest. They kind of signed a 50 goal scorer because they re-signed Jeff Skinner. Mm-hmm. So they did that too. <laughs> and they have the maybe the number one goaltending prospect in the world in the pipeline. Not just by not, being the homer. Not named Carter Hart. Still two years away, right? Who exactly? <laughs> Gritty fly blowhards. <laughs> I think I think the three six the three sixty the one eighty on gritty from two days of what the hell is this to years now of everyone thinking that social gritty's the icon. best thing that's happened as he's social icon like, has been amazing yeah it's been so pretty good. good it's better than saber tooth um all right rest in peace crusher wherever crusher is this crusher the Buttes mascot they had that one season oh. that mysteriously disappeared oh. for no reason I know where crusher is. In the, in the locker room I, I, you guys had for 11-day power play. I saw a Crusher in a storage area at, at uh, Harper Center. Oh, no. They, might, they might want to move that one out of there because they might be playing. Cover your kids' so. ears, folks. <laughs> Crusher's dead. Just taking a long, <laughs> a long, nap. cold, chilly nap in the Harper Center locker rooms. Uh, hmm. Speaking of long, cold, chilly naps, you guys want to talk about Antonio Brown for a couple minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, go ahead. If I can't wear this I, hat when we talk about him, I'm retiring. It's he's a what hat is he's that? a weird West Virginia power weird dude, man. So it wasn't that long ago now, in the grand scheme of things, that we were sitting here talking about the time that Antonio Brown was a bill for five minutes until he rejected the trade and everyone went back to normal. Except for can John, you, uh, except for John Warrow. Yeah. <laughs> John Warrow will never give that up. Can you just imagine? And it, it feels like it would have been fitting. Like last year, we have a player retire at halftime. We've got Wyoming podcast meme quarterback in and then Antonio Brown gets a frostbite injury and refuses to play until he can wear his 10 year old helmet would have been the most Buffalo Bills thing to happen since the last Buffalo Bills thing to happen so it feels very good first off that this is happening for a different team because it was really really close to happening here and I bet you all these same things would have happened regardless of where he is so God bless the Oakland Raiders John Gruden and his neighbor Derek Carr on Hard Knocks are trying to figure this guy out because Boy, howdy, have things gone off handle from five years ago when he Sparta kicked Spencer Landing on a punt return. <laughs> oh, that was so awesome. He just... I mean, it was just a few... Hell of a kick. It was when he was traded. He goes to Derek Carr's house. 
all right, brother, let's get to work. And Who would have known that a guy who calls himself Mr. Big Chest might not be the most mentally you know, stable human in the NFL? No, none of this happened, though, until after the stupid injury came out. Maybe he's trying to deflect attention. <laughs> it could be. Get to talk about anything other than the Tom, fact that he got a frost, got a uh, cryogenic freezing frostbite injury, which Tom, in and of itself is incredible. Tom Brady has come out today saying that he also has had trouble adjusting to said new helmet. Yeah, but it's Tom Brady, so no one cares. Actually, everybody cares. It was the top two headlines on ESPN today. Tom Brady's inter- inter- really highlights from the Tom Brady I was interview. Not the Fran Mueller Reyes hour. I well, he's no very comment. happy with the Hard, pressure wait, inside of his helmet. Wait, it is weird because it is trying to protect people. Well, Justin, you were talking about it. It's like a double standard where they're trying to protect people, and but then you have players that are the NFL isn't actually really that interested in player health, but they also have to real, they realize that they need players to play in they order have to, to have protect their product the image of carrying and they have to it. have the image. So yeah. they, it, this is a helmet that literally they don't test anymore because it's not feasible. The technology has been moved on many years ago by the company. So they don't even submit it to be tested anymore because it's over 10 years old or whatever. So that's why it's not even showing up. Antonio Brown's a weird guy, but Guys are superstitious, whatever. How do you do the cryogenic freezing and not wear the proper footwear? That's what's concerning to me. And then there's this reports. He's like got multiple iPads in front of him and team meetings. And he's just checking his bank accounts, favoriting things on Instagram and checking his bank accounts, which is admittedly a pretty baller move and absolutely one that I would do if I had money in a bank account. I'd be pretty sick. Um, but yeah, like he just he does not care but he may still go out there and catch 100 balls this year he might i mean i think Derek. What the hell i mean we're all, we're, all, we're all talking about it now but there is a world where this still works out but the fact that they have hard knocks in and he made a big show of it to get out of pittsburgh and now it's kind of blowing up in his face all at once or blowing on his feet yeah. <laughs> is you know i mean there's a lot to there's just a lot to take in on this story right now it's a weird weird story I mean, you thought it was weird enough when he forced his way out of Pittsburgh and then was like trying to drag Juju Smith Schuster for saying he looked up to him in the offseason. That was like the eighth weirdest thing that's happened to Antonio Brown this year. So he has really done his best to bury everything that's come out about him with something immediately more real and weirder. Yeah. And there, did- there was a rumor that the Nathan Peterman talk up was to try and distract us from this. That was coming down the pike. How does this even compare, though, to like T.O.? Because T.O. with the, you know, was he doing push-ups with money on his back or sit-ups in his driveway? He was holding press conferences yeah, like, while doing sit-ups shirtless yeah, in his driveway. Like, and you know what? T.O. was pretty good. You like, in, uh, I mean, Eagles went to the Super Bowl before that season. Antonio Brown was suspended for a Week 17 game, and the Steelers didn't make the playoffs. Say mm. what you will about T.O., but he has one more key to the city than Antonio Brown has. <laughs> <laughs> We're unaware of his current key status. Maybe if they would have offered him the key, then he would have taken the trade to come here. Give give him a key to Las Vegas when the Raiders move there. And John Gruden and Derek Carr are going to be neighbors, which would be really funny when they trade Derek Carr next offseason. This is year two of a 10-year deal with John Gruden for the Raiders organization. (sighs) Congratulations. And again, I remind you, I was in Oakland Coliseum earlier this summer. I'm sorry to hear that. No things are weird there because the official soda is 7-Up. Not Coke, not Pepsi. Seven up, which means that they have diet or uh, RC Cola on tap and diet right cola or whatever it is. Diet RC. I am shout out to Doctor Bob. Yeah, <laughs> I am so sorry to hear that you were at the Oakland. Oh, Alameda it was wonderful. Countess I went to an A's game and it was a lovely time. I felt like I was at New Era Field watching a baseball game. I felt very comfortable <laughs> there. It just there was a giant Seven Up banner on the on the outfield wall, it's and then when we went to the, I'm like, oh my god. Tell my wife, I'm like, oh my god, babe, they actually have seven up on on tap. It's incredible. I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. Well, you know, you're already losing the team anyway. Why? Why bother yeah, to screw spend this. more now? Yeah, screw this. Everybody's just gonna get yeah, like the uh, Walmart version. You Great can have value. Pepsi when you go to a home game in Las Vegas. For now, you have this RC Cola, and you will like it. Doctor Thunder. Doctor Thunder. Mountain Breeze or whatever the Mountain Dew clone is. Delicious. Today's game is brought to you by DHL Packages. Yeah. It's like, this isn't FedEx. No, we're for, we're no, fourth place uh, and everything. No <laughs> wonder uh, the black hole there is uh, always angry. Yeah, they're an angry crew. Bad soda choices. I knew it. <laughs> it was the whole thing all along. Yeah. What about the beer choices there? Uh, they were. I just drank local, whatever. So it said, if it said California on it, I drank it. 
the way to go. It didn't stick in my mind, but you had enough fine. of them to not remember what yeah, they were. Exactly. <laughs> my wife enjoyed her Mick Ultra, so I think we're fine with that. But is there anything else we, we missed right. on the show? No, I think we got it. It's Bill's preseason. We pretend to care, but well, you care. I don't care, but we pretend. I mean, I, I, only... I, I care not so much. Like it's not about the quality of football. I know it's like, it's, it's that it's there. It's, I literally the spectacle is. I it's only the, care about injuries. It's That's all I care. Just about. literally the I morphine. Just, I care about these players like, literally looking like they give a shit out there. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's interesting in the like the fourth quarter of game number three and number four when these guys are like, all right, I literally have. Ten plays to convince this team to keep me on the roster yeah, or get going cut all immediately. Out. Balls there, out there's all a lot out. going on there. Yep. I'm, most of my interest is getting into online fights about Chad Kelly, but we moved on from that. <laughs> well, so we look forward to you continuing that proud tradition. You got to yeah, create yeah. an account and just come fight with you. That's that's I respect it. He followed us, so hopefully he's listening. Yep. Thanks for the listen. Thanks for the downloads. Thanks for subscribing. You can if you haven't already found this podcast, but you've listened to this point event, I'd be really confused as to how. But in that event, you can find our podcast on Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Podbean, whatever you prefer to plug into your ear holes. We are on Twitter at 716 Sport Podcast, singular, and on Facebook at 716 Sports Podcast, plural. We are doing our great tour of the European nations, including but not limited to Bulgaria, coming up here next summer to find out just where Rasmus Ristolainen and will be playing next. And until then, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll be back here sooner than later to talk about more Bills preseason and Figure out whether Rasmus versus Lion is still a saver <laughs> or not for the 80th time. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Good night.